Alright, hello everybody, welcome to Other Path video, and today I want to show you an interesting little build that I put together that plays as a champion duelist and focuses primarily on impaling carrion golems. So why, out of all the available ascendancies, would I go for a champion? Well, mainly for Master of Metal. Now, the majority of this doesn't actually do anything. The one thing that matters is the last line. You and nearby allies deal 6 to 12 added physical damage for each impale on enemy. This applies to your minions as well, so the idea here is to get a bunch of minions and then give them as much impale chance as possible so that they can do an incredible amount of extra physical damage as they start impaling the boss. Now to help us do that, we're gonna run Inspirational, which not only gives us Nunker's Aura effect, which does affect our banner, but also gives us a free banner which helps us with the mana reservation, because we're reserving quite a lot of stuff. And finally, since we are a champion, we can get pretty juiced a Fortify that gives us armor and evasion, and finally just, you know, permanent fortify. Now the build does use a baron, but it's not a baron build. You could do this without the baron, it would just not make sense. It's kind of like the perfect helmet for this build. Firstly, it's a golem setup, so you want to get as many jewel sockets pretty much as you can get, so you might as well travel around the strength side of the tree and pick up the strength based jewel sockets and get baron scaling at the same time. Secondly, more zombies just means faster impel ramp up, and thirdly, it kind of rounds out our damage scaling, because we get flat physical damage from the champion node via impale, then we get increased damage scaling from the baron and a little bit of strength stacking, though we're not going too overboard, we only have about a thousand strength on this build, and carrying golems by default get more damage as more and more non-golem minions are around them, up to 80% with 10 minions. So, baron. Not essential, but highly, highly recommended. It's also pretty cheap, you can get a near perfect Baron with the Karen Golem damage enchantment, which is the best one for you, for about 1x. Though there aren't too many of them on the market, so if you wanna get it, you better get it now. Now when it comes to gear, we start off with the Clay Shaper, which is a 1 Chaos Unique that just gives you an extra Golem, gives you some minion life and additional physical damage for minions as well. I currently have two free sockets in there, but that's because I just removed Animate Guardian because it was just dying on the higher end bosses, so I'm probably gonna put Valmolten Shell with increased duration in there instead. Then, as I've mentioned already, we're running the Baron Helmet, which is just perfect, it gives you some strength, some minion life, half of your strength bonus is added to your minions, and plus level of socketing minion gem, so we're gonna socket in Raid Spectre, minion life, meat shield, and blood magic. The reason we're running blood magic here is because we're using two Carnage Chieftains, which are the Frenzy Charge Monkeys from Act 2, and those guys don't have a lot of mana, so if you don't give them blood magic, they will cast the cry about once, maybe twice, and then run out. So in order for them to provide Frenzy Charges reliably, we need to link them to blood magic. And the third Spectre we're using is one Mervale's Retainer, which is a Sea Witch that you can get either in Leyline or in the Crater map, and this one curses vulnerability. Now, the main setup is sitting in a chess piece, which I managed to snag for 20 Chaos Unlinked, because right now most strength stacking builds are using Joffrey, so chess pieces like this are not too expensive. And here we have Summon Carrying Golem, which at the moment is 2114, though I would ideally want to get 2123, because the quality does matter here, which is linked to Impale, for the Impale, Melee Physical Damage, Minion Damage, Brutality, and Multi Strike. And no, we don't need Feeding Frenzy here, and I will explain why a little bit later. Then we're gonna put on Astromantis, which gives us an incredible amount of stats, it's basically the best amulet we can use here outside of some mirror tier stuff. The shield I'm using is just a big fat wall of stats that has a ton of armor, ton of life, and a ton of res. And here we just have some random gems, which in this case are Pride for the increased physical damage, Flame Dash to jump around, and Desecrate to spawn corpses. Next on the menu are the boots, which are just fat boots with a lot of life, a lot of rest, and some movement speed, and here we have Flesh and Stone linked to Enlighten, otherwise we won't be able to fit it in, 
and then generosity linked to Dread Banner. Now, one thing I've just realized as I'm watching this back and doing the voiceover is that I should have just linked Pride and Flesh and Stone to Enlighten, which would give me far more unreserved mana and maybe even allow me to summon zombies when I have everything reserved. So, yikes, oh well, I guess things happen. But anyway, moving on from there, we have an Unset Ring, which is some strength, some resistances, and a little bit of life, and here I put Flesh Offering, a really fat life belt that I beastcrafted the aspect of the Avian on, which is the best aspect you can get because it gives you and your minions movement speed and double damage, then a fat pair of gloves with some strength, a ton of life, and some res, and here's where we're gonna socket our Ray Zombie, so we have Ray Zombie, I managed to hit 21-23 in the temple with the double corruption, but you don't really need it, it's mostly there for the Impale and the extra levels, just give them life and they're linked to feeding frenzy to provide the extra damage to our golems and to make them aggressive impale so that they impale and then i have an empower level 4 because i had an empower level 4 but i'm seriously thinking about swapping it over to minion life instead and finally we have the second ring which is pretty bad actually it has a little bit of strength some life a little bit of res and then i crafted on the mana reduction cost and here's where i put my convocation the passive tree here is a little bit all over the place and i'm not entirely sure it's 100 percent optimized so feel free to experiment here and just make sure you pick up all the life all the strength and like all the jewel sockets you can with the remaining points going towards minion nodes and do not skimp on defensive minion nodes otherwise your minions will keep dying all the time and also i would highly recommend you pick up this aura wheel as well it gives you non-curse aura effect, increase area of effect of aura skills, and then just a bunch of area of effect, reduce mana reservation, and then some non-curse aura effect. This is pretty important and it's something that I want to emphasize because you lose a significant portion of your damage if either your minions or the enemies move out of the range of your auras. And this one wheel basically makes all your auras, including the ones you get as a champion, screen wide. Plus the aura effect just gives you more damage thanks to your auras and it's specifically good for Dread Banner because it buffs the impale chance it gives to your minions. And that's really good, the higher you can pump up their impale chance the better. So once again I would highly recommend you pick up that one aura wheel at the bottom. This is also the reason by the way why you actually want to put quality on your auras because it increases their area of effect. And other than that, we're just gonna path through Scion, pick up even more jewel sockets and head towards Witch where we pick up extra Spectre and extra Golem, even more jewel sockets and some minion nodes. Next on the menu, we have jewel sockets, which are very important. So we want to start it off with a single Ghastly Eye jewel where you want to get minions have a chance to taunt on hit with attacks. I got myself a really fancy one because I have the currency, but you don't have to, just make sure it has taunt. After that, we're gonna run the Anima Stone, which gives you an extra golem and then an additional golem if you have three primordial items socketed or equipped. And we achieve this by running a bunch of primordial jewels. So we start off with two primordial eminences, which are mainly there for the golem attacking cow speed. And the reason I ran two of them is because I felt the cutting golems were just too slow with multi strike. So I tried one, it wasn't enough, so I added a second one. Then we're also gonna run two primordial harm which primarily give your golems increased cooldown recovery speed so that they can pretty much leap slam and do the shockwave as often as possible but it also gives them some regen and a little bit of damage and we top it off with one primordial might to make them aggressive so that we don't have to run feeding frenzy and finally it's sort of an experimental one i'm running a thread of hope with a small allocation ring just so i don't have to path up to grave pack which is a really strong node but it takes a lot of points to get now despite the build only having about 6000 life at level 92 it is incredibly beefy because it has multiple layers of defense and I only really die to like the random stupid one shots from metamorphs. I am currently sitting at about 14,000 armor which gives me estimated physical damage reduction of about 58% with some evasion and attack dodge as well. I'm regenerating about 500 health and I have some max rest too with a decent amount of chaos resistance and when I use my flasks my estimated physical damage reduction jumps up to 85 and my attack blocks jumps up to 42. Then since I am a champion I have permanent fortify which reduces the damage I take from hits quite significantly and I just have a bunch of minions that draw attention from me especially since they taunt via the Ghastly Eye Jewel. And also, this is one thing that people often forget about with Baron, if you get 1000 strength, 2% of all the damage your zombies do will be leached to you as a life. This is why you would ideally want to hit at least 1000 strength. Because it's really good, like as long as your zombies are hitting something, it's like you have a life flask ticking at all times. Now that's not to say that the build is perfect, the minions are a little bit squishy and it really shows on Uber Elder, which I was not able to kill with this setup. I ripped two sets and when I was about to rip a third one, 
one, I was like, what am I doing? And I had to salvage it with my mana guardian. But it was the only fight that gave me any kind of trouble, everything else was fine, and it was partially due to my own incompetence. I'm pretty sure a much better player would have been able to do it, I'm just not very good at keeping track of both of them while dealing with the mechanics, and as soon as you place the AoE in the wrong spots and you leave like the squid alive for too long, your minions will run over it and just melt. So if all you want to do is farm Uber Elder, this is probably not the build to do it with. But it's absolutely fine, great even, at doing everything else. And that was a very pleasant surprise, because I wasn't super confident in this build when I was first theory crafting it, but it ended up turning into probably the best carrion golem setup that I've put together so far. Even the leveling process was actually pretty good, you can just pick up smites, some zombies, pick up a relic, then pick up herald of purity, and maybe even do some dominating blow before finally switching over to carrion golems and just zooming and booming from there. Just make sure you path towards the witch clusters first and pick up the marauder stuff later later on. You also don't get any of the gems you want to use for leveling as a duelist, so you will have to buy them with a different character. And that is pretty much all there is to say, so yeah, an impale carrying golem champion. So I thank you very much for watching, as always guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you will give this build a shot because it's a lot of fun and it's very chill as well, you basically just run around, you pop flesh offering every now and then, convocate your minions every now and then, and that's pretty much it. And I will see you some other time, bye bye.